Hello, uh, thank you very much for joining our third Legislative Priorities Rapid Response Webinar. Our focus today is to train you to be better participants in your local town hall meeting. We are going to work on getting answers and building power at your local public forum. My name is Rain Atman. I'm Puget Sound Advocacy Manager at Washington Environmental Council. And along with me, I have... Uh, this is Alex Epstein. I'm the Field Manager at Climate Solutions. What are town halls good for? Well, uh, from our experience, it's a great way to educate the electorate. It's a great way to enforce our position or your position with elected officials and solidify champions on the issues that you care about. And it's an excellent way to really get public answers to uh, tough questions and put our uh, legislators in a, in a public forum to answer the question and take a position on an issue. There are different kinds of town halls uh, and each one is going to be very unique and very different. Um, the three that we've witnessed over the last few years include a telephone town hall in which uh, legislators uh, are available to you via a conference call where they stay in Olympia and make available an opportunity for you to ask your question via a conference call and then uh, answer questions. It's not ideal because it's not a face-to-face -face meeting. The second one is when legislators go to their home districts and have a particular time set on a Saturday morning in which the public uh, attends and mostly uh, three legislators are present. And it's a time where you can write down a question and submit it ahead of time when you arrive and then they will answer the questions based on themes or issues like health care like transportation, like oil transportation, like climate change. But their answers usually are very vague uh, to, to accommodate the vagueness of that issue. Then the other third scenario is when they actually allow individuals to ask their question directly to the legislator. Uh, they have the microphone and are able to ask that question. So in essence, it's free for all and does not guarantee you uh, your question to be asked. And now we're going to look into what makes a good question. All right, this is Alex again. Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, I wanted to just quickly point out three of the things we found to be the most important characteristics of a really great question at a town hall. Uh, so the first thing is asking one direct question. Often People's questions can get uh, you know, somewhat distracted, have multiple parts, and often we want to have one real ask for one direct question that we can get across and try and get an answer to. Uh, you're more likely to get an answer to the question if you just have one than you have three separate questions. Uh, second would be to tell them why you care, them being the elected officials. We want to make sure that they know why this is an important issue to you. Uh, so personalize it a little bit, and that's number three, which is you know, personalizing it towards each legislator. Every legislator has a different position uh, in their different committees or in their different house. Uh, so we need to make sure that we are aware of where they're coming from and how we can personalize this question directly for them. Sometimes that might be, mean that they are a chair of a committee uh, or it might mean that they're already a co-sponsor and just things that you need to be aware of. So to, to try and show you guys instead of just telling you what makes a good uh, question, we have an example from a few years ago of a woman asking a town hall to President Obama. Uh, so we're going to take a second, switch over, and then we will show you, we'll show you this example. I am a chief financial officer for a veteran service organization and that's here in Washington. I'm also a mother. I'm a wife. I'm an American veteran. And I'm one of your middle class Americans. And quite frankly, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted of defending you defending your administration, defending the mantle of change that I voted for, and deeply disappointed with where we are right now. I, I've been told that I voted for a man who said he was going to change things in a meaningful way for the middle class. I, I'm one of those people, and I'm waiting, sir. I, I'm waiting. I, I don't feel it yet. And I thought, well, it wouldn't be in great measure. I would feel it in some small measure. I have two children in private school. 
uh, and the financial recession has taken an enormous toll on my family. Uh, my husband and I joked for years that we thought we were well beyond the hot dogs and beans era of our lives. Right. Uh, but quite frankly, it's starting to knock on our door and, and ring true that that might be where we're headed again. And quite frankly, Mr. President, I need you to answer this honestly. Is this my new reality? So uh, that was a really interesting example of what can make a good PowerPoint question. Uh, a couple things I wanted to just note specifically. One thing that was really great about that example uh, is she was obviously very brave and very honest. It was a really personal and emotional story. Uh, another specific thing you notice, she brought up promises that Obama had made before his election. This is accountability. This is talking about what you promised to do and the way that things have turned out. Um, it was very compelling. He actually kept standing the entire time, which is a good a little practical thing that we'll talk about in a second. Um, and, you know, it really, her whole story set up that question very well of, is this my new reality? Uh, so next we want to move on and we want to talk a little bit about specifically what we can do to make sure we are winning the day of a town hall. So the first thing is to be prepared. Uh, preparation is definitely the name of the game, and that is partially knowing your legislator. Like you said earlier, are they a co-sponsor? Uh, do they have some inherent interests in this bill? Uh, also, writing out your questions ahead of time, and that's not just to say, you know, write out an outline. Actually having the written, the written question all written so that you can turn it in afterwards if necessary. Uh, the next is to know the format of the town hall, and that's like what Rain brought up earlier to make sure you know the scenarios and the format that you're getting into so that you can be as prepared as possible. Uh, so the next suggestion is to be specific. Long questions with too, many, too much explanation can give our elected officials and representatives a lot of ways to duck out of the main question. So we want to ask one main specific question. The next one is a fun one. It's just to bring a friend. Uh, you know, partially this is for support, just to be more confident as you're there, but also if you all have a couple questions that you want to get answered and prioritize, make sure that there's three of you there, you all know the question, and you spread out throughout the room to give yourself the best chance of making sure that that question is asked. Uh, so the next is to be genuine. You know, use your actual background of your life, frame the question, uh, and make sure that it's as impactful as possible. Uh, so long as you can keep the question focused, as we said above, but to make sure that you're being genuine and real and bringing in your personal story. Uh, next one is to be persistent. Uh, not to be afraid to, to get to the floor to ask your question. Um, you can use strong but respectful language. And this is a big one. We recommend you stay standing for the full uh, answer. You know, a lot of times people will ask their question, sit down, and you'll watch the elected official just kind of go off on a, a tangent about some other thing that's not even related. By standing, it maintains that you are asking this question, you would like a specific answer to that question, and don't be afraid to ask a follow-up if you don't feel like they gave you that answer. And by the time you sit down, that is an indication that you're satisfied to some extent with the answer that they provided. Absolutely. Uh, so the next one is to be attentive, uh, and actually listening throughout as much as you can. Often we'll see uh, the same question asked at town halls as people show up late or just weren't paying attention, and it does show, uh, you know, a little bit of almost disrespect to the town hall forum. So we want to make sure we're respectful and moving through in uh, as, as deferential as a fashion as we can. Uh, and then to be brave. So these are not always the easiest things, but remember, this is a really amazing opportunity. And these people that are there listening are paid to represent you. So obviously don't be rude but you can tell the legislature that they didn't answer your question and ask them to, to reword or to look at the question again. Like we said, continue to stand, um, paying attention, and to be strong. Be a strong uh, constituent of the representatives. Well, thank you, Alex. Uh, well, let's take a look at uh, an example for oil transportation safety bill, which is one of the top priorities for the environmental community. And as you look at this uh, question, uh, there's a couple of things that uh, really stand out. One is you identify who you are um, by name and also maybe where you live, uh, really hitting home to the fact that I, my house, is one quarter mile from a railroad track. 
So it really shows the personal importance of this issue to me. Second, I'm teeing up the issue. Next couple sentence or two is what is the issue at hand that I want to talk about? In this case, it's governor request legislation, House Bill 1449. So I'm identifying exactly what bill is important. And finally, I have a very simple question, and it's one singular question. And it's essentially, will you support House Bill 1449? In some respects, if you know that a legislator is already supportive, you can direct the question to, this question is directed to Senator X. Will you support Senate Bill such and such? So you can really uh, craft it to a particular legislator, or you can craft it to all three legislators. And now let's take a look at a second example of a good question. So uh, this is one that's looking at a, a, another bill. It's Carbon Pollution Accountability Act. Um, you can see a lot of the same tenants that Rain just talked about. You want to introduce yourself, give some context to why this is important, and then have a specific ask. So in this case, my name is Alex Epstein, and I'm concerned about the future of our state. Washington has always been a place that has great quality of life, with clean air, wonderful fresh water, an economy built on innovation and cutting-edge technology. And I believe that Washington could be a leader in smart and strong carbon cutting that are critical, or policies that are critical to maintaining this quality of life. Therefore, I want to ask you if you'll pledge to vote and advocate for the Carbon Pollution Accountability Act. You can see that it's very direct at the end. The beginning part is establishing who I am, why this is important, and why they should care about the fact that I care about this. And it ends with a direct ask to support our bill. Thank you, Alex. Uh, so next we wanted to just make sure that people have a good idea of what to expect. Uh, you know, these are an interesting process, but the main thing to, to know is to be patient and to be flexible. Uh, we will, you, the times as these are announced are coming out on a, a rolling scale. We find them out as we go. Uh, we will be definitely educating and telling you guys about when these town halls are happening, but it's really important that beforehand and at the actual day of, you're patient and flexible. Um, don't necessarily expect a soapbox. Uh, we usually don't get very much time to speak, but and, and in that same boat, don't expect a conversation. Do expect to be able to get your view briefly out and ask a specific question. All right, and then looking ahead to better prepare yourself, one really critical thing to do is research and prepare your knowledge about your legislators and a great resource to find out what committees they sit on, if they're in leadership role, uh, what their telephone number is, what their interests are, what their biography is, is at the legislative website, which is leg.wa.gov. And also, you should write out a few questions. Um, and I sat in town hall meetings where I come with one question, and then as I sit there and listen to legislators, I sometimes tend to uh, redraft it in a form that I feel is a little better. But let's uh, look at how you can uh, better prepare yourself because uh, when you do all this research, it's really hard to keep in mind which legislator is on what committee uh, and which is, uh, what interest they have. So looking at a simple Excel spreadsheet, this is the 36th legislative district. You'll see uh, the legislators on the top row. And then the first column is kind of the uh, identifier of what uh, I'm looking for in that legislator. And this is a really good cheat sheet. Um, fill it out, populate it, print it out, bring it with you. With that in mind, uh, I would like to uh, wish you all the best in your town hall meeting. Um, go win the day. And if you have any questions, please contact Alex at climatesolutions.org or rain at wecprotects.org. Thank you all so much for your work and for joining us today. Thank mm -hmm. you.